Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my November wrap up. It's been a hot minute, which I already said in my other video that I'm filming today. But uh, yeah, so November, as predicted, was not super consistent. I read a lot more than I thought I was going to. Almost none of it was from my TBR though. So oops. I do still plan to read the books that I didn't finish, the ones that I'm like part of the way through, and then also the books that I didn't even get to on my TBR. And uh, I once again did not read Vengeful, so I don't know what's wrong with me. So yeah, in November, I actually mainly was listening to audiobooks. Well, I think, yeah, legit half. I think half of what my reading accounts for is audiobooks. And then I said in my TBR video that I was think hoping to like do more writing. And I did actually, I was kind of on a writing bender. So it wasn't a like NaNoWriMo. I don't know how many words I wrote. It doesn't matter because I wrote like 20 single spaced pages and then I was on a walk like two days ago and was like, I have it. I have it. The thing I've been missing. I have to go back now and rewrite everything because I like figured out what I was missing, which I'm really hyped for, but also like, man, what a waste of my time. Like it's not a waste of my time because like I definitely learned about my own world while writing about it. So I couldn't really have done this without having done that first. Anyway, that's not why you're here. You're here to hear, but well, that's my November wrap up. I did that in November. So yeah. Then the other, it was obviously the holidays took time away from reading because I was like eating and hanging out with people as one does. Didn't do any Black Friday shopping because, oh God, I bought this camera online because I hate going shopping, especially on Black Friday. People are crazy. But yeah, okay. So like the biggest... One of the biggest drains on my time this month is watching rant reviews of The Crimes of Grindelwald. I was gonna see that movie. I was definitely gonna see it. I still kind of want to, but like the day after it came out, my feed just like filled up with rant reviews and I just have been binge watching them. I've almost run out of, like, I just keep like searching for new ones. I'm like, there's gotta be more. Like I spent so many hours watching rant reviews. I could have just watched the movie. It would have saved me so much time. But so, yeah, I haven't been filming videos, reading books, or watching other booktubers because I've just been watching Crimes of Grindelwald rant reviews. <laughs> so I highly recommend not the movie. I highly recommend watching rant reviews. It's a delightful way to spend days. So yeah, let's talk about what I read. I haven't counted. I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books, and then I'm about halfway through. No, I'm... I am halfway through two others and then I'm literally almost done with another one. So like it's technically I'm not done with it, but like probably finish it today. I thought I was going to finish it last night, but then I didn't read anything like super close. So basically 10 books and uh, yeah, almost none of them were on my TBR. So here we go. Like there's a lot of Witcher books. I just like went on a Witcher bender. So let's buckle up. The first book I have is Sword of Destiny, which was actually on my TBR. It was like the one Witcher book that was on my TBR and I was like already part of the way through it. Um, when I put it on my TBR. So I finished it and immediately read more Witcher books. So not too much to say about this. I'm like flying through the series. I never binge read series, but I read like, I'm reading them like back to back. I really love them. And when I say reading, I'm listening to the audiobooks. I read the very first one, The Last Wish, as a book book, like in the beginning of the year. And I liked it and then just didn't continue with it because, you know, life TBRs. And I picked up the audiobooks and the book is good, like as a book, but the audiobooks are so good. The narrator is so good. So if you like audiobooks, then I highly recommend The Witcher audiobooks. I mean, they're good books, so I just recommend them generally. But if you're looking for your next audiobook, The Witcher books are really good. Can't really talk too much about it because like, it's just like, there's like three Witcher books on this wrap up. So, um, it's just continuing the story. I'll probably, do, when I finish the series, I'll probably do a whole video about the series in general, but it's really good grimdark fantasy. It's quite funny. The representation of women is like strange, but also surprisingly progressive. And I am like living for Geralt and little Siri, like little kid Siri. Oh my God. It's my favorite thing ever. So much love for that. Anyway. Yeah, I like these books. You should read them. They're good. So it's gonna be two more. So let's move this along. The next book that I read was Heart of the Fae by, I think this is out of order. It's definitely out of order. Hold on, I gotta shuffle these around a bit. I think that's in order now. Whatever. Whoa, everything's fine. 
fine. Oh, I kind of bent it. Oh, yikes. Okay, everything's fine. Heart of the Fae by Emma Ham. I still have a book wrong in here. Don't know why. Oh, I do know why. I did not like this book. Like, at all. Yikes. This is an indie author. So, like, I always want to, like, give kind of, not to give a pass, but, like, I get that as an indie author, you don't have, like, the machine of the publisher behind you. So, like, if there's, like, grammatical errors, if there's, like, weird formatting issues, if it's, like, not as polished, I'm, like, like, I'll, um, not inflate, but, like, I don't know, I'll adjust my score accordingly, like, to, like, factor that in. I, at very, at, like, the first few pages of this book, I was like, I feel like I'm gonna like this. It went massively downhill from there. So I did actually give it a higher star rating than I would have if this was traditionally published. If this had been traditionally published, I would film a rant review about it, because it was that bad. But because it was an indie author, like, I don't want to, like, I don't feel like attacking someone. <laughs> who's like not, like if you have a huge publisher behind you, I'm like, there's literally no excuse. Like, I don't understand who let this go. And like, at that point, I feel like I'm not attacking the author as much as I'm like attacking the whole machine that allowed it to be published. When it's an indie author, I'm like, okay, like this person just like wrote the story and put it out there for everyone. And I think they should not have, but like live your life. It's fine. And I think a lot of people do like this book, so it's fine. I don't like it and I would not recommend it. So I won't film a rant review because I just can't like morally justify that. But like for people who care about my opinion and trust my opinion, I don't want them picking up this book because they're like, oh, I kind of liked it. I did not kind of like it. I think it was terrible. The world building was terrible. There was no chemistry in the relationship. The characters were extremely inconsistent, like from page to page, like in mid conversation, like it felt like the author just, like, needed them to say things so they would say them for the plot. It, like, didn't fit their characters. And then the dialogue was weirdly modern, but also, like, filled with, like, a bunch of, like, period-sounding jargon. And it was just bad. It was bad. Um, it's a fey version of Beauty and the Beast, if you didn't know. So, yeah. Don't read this one. So, because I was really super disappointed with Heart of the Fey, and I had, like, been expecting to enjoy, like, a fun fantasy romance because I knew it would be that and it is that definitely is that Ugh. very problematic romantic relationship too anyway enough about that one um I needed a palate cleanser so I reread all of Radiance that same night like into like three in the morning because I was this is shorter than the other one it's like 250 pages um I read this earlier in this year and I was like ugh heart of the fae left a really bad taste in my mouth I can't go to sleep after having just read that, like, I need to clear it. So I was like, what can I read? And I was like, Radiance! I just read the whole thing again. And I I feel like I'm gonna read it again soon, because I think Bethany just bought it, because I've just been going on and on about this book. So Bethany was like, buddy read? I was like, yes! Let's do it! Three times! Um, so if she's planning to read this in December, I'll totally read it again. It's so good. Like, it is a fantasy romance, but it's my favorite. It's... It's so good. I just love it so much. I already talked about this like a few months ago when I read it the first time. So I think I read it in May if you want to like look up when I talked about it. But it's so good. I love you book. It's so good. Okay. The next book that I read was um, Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo, which is the third Grisha book. Um, so I'm done with the Grisha trilogy. I am such a Melina shipper. Everybody out there who ships Alina with the Darkling, the Darkling can choke, you can choke. That's ridiculous. I don't know what's wrong with you. Melina is forever. It's life. Um, yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because it's the end of the trilogy, so I don't want to spoil anything where people haven't read it. I really liked it. Six of Crows is better. Still is better. But I did really like the Grisha trilogy, and it did flesh out some things for Six of Crows that made it made Six of Crows even better. So, like, because there's a lot of nods in Six of Crows to the Grishaverse that or just you can read the book and not get it which I did and I still love Six of Crows but now having read this like I really super enjoy the nods to the Grishaverse in Six of Crows which before were just like Whoosh. and I'm so fucking hyped for King of Scars which is coming out like mm. next month at this point yeah we're in December so January got my tickets to see Lee Bardugo so freaking excited okay someday I will stop looking over there but that day is not this day and if you're confused, I mean, because I have a camera with, like, a viewfinder that I can look at, and I can't not look at it. <sighs> I'm sorry. The next book that I read was another Witcher book, except, um, I don't know if you know, but, like, this normal size, you can't buy separately, like, two of the books. You can't buy, I don't know how they, which ones it is, but so I don't have 
the physical blood of elves. So I just put a sticky note over Baptism of Fire, which is the third book, which I haven't gotten to yet, because uh, I don't have Blood of Elves. I did order a different edition so that I would have it. It's not going to match these, which is aggravating, but it's so weird. They like it's You can only get like the mass market paperbacks of like two of them unless you buy a whole set. And then it's in, it's so stupid. Anyway, Blood of Elves, another Witcher book. Fabulous. Loved it. Great series. I'm gonna probably read like five more Witcher books. Are there even five more for me to read? Whatever. I'm probably gonna read the rest of the Witcher series in December. It's not gonna be on a TBR. I'm just gonna do it. Next book that I read was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Also an audiobook, even though I do have the illustrated edition. Um, so I did look at the illustrations, but I listened to the audiobook, which is read by Jason Isaacs. Highly, highly recommend. I'm really upset. I immediately looked to see if he does other audiobooks. He's he's done like one other audiobook, and it's not a book I care about. Um, if you don't know who Jason Isaacs is, he's the actor that plays um, Captain Hook in the live action Peter Pan, and he's Lucius Malfoy in Harry Potter. Probably should have started with Lucius because you probably know him from that better. <laughs> I'm just a Peter Pan nut. Anyway, A Monster Calls, I would not have read if my friend hadn't made me. We have a deal. She'll read Golden Sun if I read. Monster Calls, President Bitch, and The Lie Tree. And I know my, that's like three to one, but Golden Sun is much longer than any of those three books. So it's fine. I agree to this. So I read A Monster Calls. I listened to A Monster Calls. And it's so emotional. I knew it would be. That's why I would never read this by choice. It is brutal. So if you want to die of feelings, then read this book. It's really good. It's. I knew it would be good. I was just like, why would I put myself through that? It's about a boy whose mom is dying of cancer. So he like, his like fears and guilt over how he feels about this manifest themselves in this like monster that he's, I don't want to say hallucinating, but like, that's like the way that it's, it's not really magical realism because I'm pretty sure you're supposed to just that's how he's dealing with it. He's, like, not compartmentalizing. But, yeah, he's, like, invented this monster as, like, a way to, like, deal with his feelings. And it's really beautiful. And it's, I died of feelings. It's just too much. So if you like to suffer, then read this book because it's excellent. Five out of five stars. Audiobook, five out of five stars. But Jesus Christ. Why? The next book that I read was another Witcher book. This is the one, The Time of Contempt, because I have it. Um, again, listen to it on audiobook, and it's freaking amazing. So read the Witcher books. That's all I gotta say to you, or listen to them. Just audiobooks. Fab. Then I also read, well, I listened to <laughs> Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I, after finishing the Grisha Trilogy, wanted to reread Six of Crows. And the first time I read it was also as an audiobook. I listened to it on the way up um, to visit family for Thanksgiving. So my parents were also listening to it. And I talk about this book all the time. So I was like, you finally get to meet Kaz! I named my car Kaz. So to them, Kaz is my car. So now they got to meet the real Mr. Brecker. And, um... I think my mom is a little shook that I like Kaz so much because he's a criminal. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's amazing. And I loved having read it, having read the Grisha Trilogy now, rereading this. And like, it's, I mean, I just like the, it's an amazing book. So you should read it and it's great. But I got even more enjoyment out of it because I read the Grisha book, books recently. So I like got all the like mentions and nods and homages and whatever. And I'm going to read Crooked Kingdom probably in December, and then be ready for King of Scars. <laughs> the last book that I finished was Traitor's Blade by Sebastian DeCastell. I just finished filming a rant review, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to post before I post this. So if you've already seen it, then you already know how I feel about it. If you haven't seen it, then go watch it. Basically, it's awful. Don't read this book, like actively, like it's not just not my cup of tea, it's bad and I object to it existing you know. So yeah, don't read this. It's high fantasy. That's like bantery criminal type thing that I was expecting to be like my new lives of Locke Lamora. It's not. It's garbage. Don't read it. End of story. Okay, then I have three books that um, I have started. Um, one I'm almost done with, so let's start with that. I, I thought I was going to finish this last night, but I didn't read anything last night. And that's Johannes Cabal, The Necromancer. This was recommended to me by Mara from Books Like Well. And this is such, like, Pratchett vibes. Like, Terry Pratchett, Good Omens. Like, it's very, like, tongue-in-cheek, but, like, dark and kind of, like, British humor. 
Um, it's like this guy who's made, he gave his soul to the devil because he's a necromancer. And so he thought it would help him in his like experiments and studies to like be without his soul. But he's like, actually, it's super inconvenient to not have my soul. So I'd like it back, please. And he's like, he being the devil is like, um, okay, you can have it back if you, ex- in exchange for a hundred other souls. So you get me those souls, I'll give you your soul back. So this whole book is Johannes Cabal collecting those hundred souls by operating a carnival. And he, in that carnival, he's like going around collecting souls of people who come to the carnival. And it's just so, it's hardcore Terry Pratchett vibes, honestly. It's really funny, but not in like a haha way, just like in a, it's, it's very British humor, which I like. It's not for everyone, but if you like that kind of thing, like if you like The Good Omens, if you like Hogfather, I think you'd really like this book. It's very much like that. Then I, I'm about halfway through The Dream Thieves, um, and like last month this happened too. I started the month and read halfway through The Raven Boys and then finished the month by reading the second half. So this weekend I'll probably finish The Dream Thieves, um, like today or tomorrow. But I, I really like it. I just, I don't know what it is about me. Like I have to read it like half at a time. I don't know why, but I do. It's the second book in the Raven cycle, if you didn't know. And I'm really liking it. So I will finish it soon. And then I'm about a third of the way through Malfunction by Jay Prozzi, which I am also really liking, but like I picked it up right in the middle of my writing bender and it's not an audiobook. So the way I pushed through a lot of these was just like, what? when I can't, I'm usually listening to an audiobook during a time when I couldn't be reading something because I'm doing something else. So it helps me to get through a lot of books that way. But Malfunction is a, it's indie published. So, and she sent me the book and I am really liking it, but like I haven't had a lot of time to sit down and read. And when I did, I was writing. (laughs) Sorry. So yeah, I do hope to finish this really soon because I am really liking it. And yeah. That's everything that I read in November. That's everything I did in November. Let me know in the comments down below what you did in November. If you've read these books, if you like these books, if you hate these books, all the things, you know, whatever the jam. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye.